We got 175,000 miles on this new to me WJ. Everything is working great, except that darn airbag light. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we are going to attempt to get the airbag warning light off of this Gray Hornet WJ. Now I'm saying attempting because it's usually one of two things. Either the airbag module ain't working right or two, the clock spring is just worn out and the signal's not getting through too well to the old uh, airbag unit. Uh, I did this fix on the Green Hornet WJ and well that worked fine with just the airbag module so I went ahead and tried the airbag module for this thing it didn't fix the problem because well I used a junkyard airbag module and I didn't know if that thing actually worked or not so uh, I took a chance with a junkyard module uh, the Green Hornet airbag module solved the problem uh, back in the day that was a junkyard module plug that baby in it fixed the problem that one was good to go but I can't use that module on this Jeep they're just different this year has two different kind of connectors I think it's the difference between a V8 and a straight six one is black the other's got gray connectors but today we're gonna try the clock spring fix we'll see if that works and I'll show you what you need for the clock spring fix all right, to do the clock spring job, you're gonna need the clock spring. I got this online, brand new. You're gonna need something to take off the battery terminals. Mine is a 13 millimeter. Gonna need a screw driver, Phillips head. And gonna need a small eight millimeter socket. Gonna need a big 21 millimeter on a half inch drive. And you're going to need a puller, the puller with the little forks these little prongs that come out the threaded ones won't work and i got a 14 millimeter to drive this bad boy and of course some muscle that'll make your job much easier all right game on here we go pop the hood come over here open this bad boy up and we're gonna disconnect the battery all right when we're messing around with airbags which we're gonna be doing today. You're gonna to wanna to remove the battery terminals for at least a few minutes. Make sure uh, the system is dissipated from its juices. Andy had an airbag warning light on his XJ. His airbags exploded, so I take airbags very seriously and uh, take it seriously when we have an airbag warning light too. So make sure you disconnect your batteries and uh, you'll be a lot safer. Tuck this out of the way. So let's be safe and disconnect our batteries. All right, once this Jeep has rested and the juices have dissipated out of the system, we're gonna take our eight millimeter and right up in here, these are the two screws that hold on the airbag. Gonna go loosen this up. There's one on each side. There's one. There's two. Now, don't just go ahead and yank the airbag out. We got to disconnect the horn. Push this tab down and pull. And we're gonna disconnect the actual airbag itself. These dual airbag igniters, deployers. I don't know what they're called. They make your airbag go boom. There we go. We'll set this down nice and safely over there. And while you're still in here, you can go ahead and pinch these little tabs down and pull off the rest of the clock spring connections. These are for the cruise control and radio controls. Now, we'll go ahead and take off this nut. This is the old 21 millimeter. All right, if you have a deep dish, you might fit in there. If not, if you have a regular dish, <laughs> shallow, you might need a little extension to clear the steering wheel, and we're just gonna crack it loose. There we go. <laughs> this is still a little loose from uh, when I swapped over the steering wheel to wood grain, because Laredo's didn't have wood grain, only the Overland. And while you're doing this, now's a good time to upgrade your steering wheel if you want. All right, now we will apply our puller. All right, we're gonna situate this little nub 
right in the indent of this steering column. And then we'll center up these little pullers, these little forkies, little forky jobbies, right in there. And I'm doing one-handed, so excuse me if it's not perfect. I'll just kind of demonstrate it right now. So it's gonna end up looking something like that. Nice and centered up, if possible. Whoops. And then we're just gonna tighten down this 14 millimeter nut until it pops off. All right, got everything set it up, got my 14 millimeter on. This should come out easy, I'm hoping. If you haven't had your steering wheel off, uh, hang in there, it might be a little struggle. This should just pop off, hopefully. <laughs> there we go. Oops. Now we gotta crack open this clamshell. We got one, should be a Phillips head screw in here. Let's crack this loose. This is a long one. Bear with me. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes it just drops out. <laughs> and this is just clipped in place so we can give this a little gentle tug. It should separate. Oh. <laughs> should. And there we go. We have our clock spring exposed. We're just going to use one uh two more phillips head and we're gonna disconnect it so let's see if i can get my fingers in here now right here disconnect this little tab right here gotta push that down and pull out same thing over here tab right here and pull very nice very nice now as we unscrew this bad boy let's note its orientation we have the main housing with the little connectors on the bottom. This is gonna be down, and we're gonna want this connector up top at the 12 o'clock position, clock spring. <laughs> there, just comes right off. Now, if the new one works, I might disassemble this and try to make something out of it for uh, Beach Jeep, uh, that crazy project. Still on hold, so we'll pull out our new one, and let's see. Like I said, we want it oriented with these down. And we're gonna have to unplug this guy. See right here, this is a lock. It makes it so it doesn't spin around. You don't want this thing spinning around on you. You don't wanna snap this thing if it's too tightly wound in one direction. Also, real quick, it's got three little holes, one, two and three, those should line up with these holes. And if you have this oriented properly, they should just line right back up again. That is the only thing to it. Very simple, there, right there. That's in place. Now I'll just uh, put those screws back in. There we go. She's locked in place, not going anywhere because of the three little nubs. I'm gonna go ahead and use this plugger on the old clock spring, just so it doesn't unwind itself. If in fact I do need a good clock spring for experimental purposes. There. <laughs> also, I'm just noticing now that this clock spring comes with two new airbag wires. See, those are the old ones. These are the new ones. We'll, uh, we'll just use the new ones. And we're gonna go ahead and plug this guy in. Right here, connector two. Let's go ahead and put on our top half of our clamshell. And also now's a good time to replace your switches if you need to. The bottom one just lines up and clicks in place with the top one. Always more difficult one-handed, but you guys get the point. Clamshell screw, send that up nice and carefully. All right, time to put the steering wheel back on. I'm just gonna pull these out. Save this for later, because I don't want these wires in my way. Let's lay our steering wheel in place. It should be uh, just about 12 o'clock, since that's how we took it out. There are splines, if you can see. There should be right there, that little notch. That'll let you know that it's lining up with that little notch. It's like a basically like a missing spline. And when you get it right, there, it just sits right in. 
Beautiful. Make sure our wires are up and out of the way. We'll go ahead and we can plug this one back in. Steering wheel controls in and radio controls in or cruise control radio controls. This is that horn wire. Keep that up and out of the way and go ahead and grab our nut. Make sure we get our nut in. Put the old bad boy to tighten. And we don't have to crush this sucker on, but we want to make sure it's nice and tight. I don't have torque specs, but uh, you know, don't be a wimp. There we go. That should be good. All right, now we'll get the airbag back on. Now, if you don't have strong fingernails, an additional tool you may need as a pick, we just want to pry these little yellow tabs up so we could disconnect the old wires from the airbag. Once these are up, you should be able to just pinch this in. Pop it out. There we go. Bye-bye oldies. Hello newbies. And of course, they are color-coded. Green goes to green. Thank you. And black goes to black. She's in. Come back up here. Plug the airbag in. Right up top. That's clipped on. And we'll get the horn. Hey. And stuff her back in. Center her up. Good to go. Let's get the eights. All right, we can find them by hand and start them by hand. That's always the easiest way. All right, before we tighten that one down, we'll go ahead and get in our second one. Alright, she's done. Let's go plug her in. Time to reconnect and a good sign that you did it right is being able to reconnect these batteries without the airbag blowing up. Alright, we <laughs> passed the first test. I'm going to go tighten these things on. And now the big test, <laughs> we're going to start her up. And to avoid possible calamity, we're going to reach over from the passenger side, because if this thing blows, well, we won't get hit in the face. Well, crap. <laughs> airbag light is still on. So I'm guessing maybe it was the airbag module. I'm going to take this thing around the block. Maybe it'll go off, I doubt it, but uh, I'm gonna refer you over to my other airbag light video back in the old Green Hornet. So uh, click the link somewhere over here. And uh, yeah, that that could get the airbag light off. I'm, I'm gonna go do that project. No need to film it since I already got a video up. So check that out. I'm gonna go do that whole process right now and I'll get back to you uh, if, that works. I got a, got a new airbag module uh, lying around, so I'll, I'll put that in. Oh boy.
have it. Old airbag module out, a new airbag module in, and no more airbag light. <laughs> How do you like that, guys? Ah, just another airbag module. Good thing, too. It was my last one. So, that's it. I'm, uh, I'm done with this video. Uh, gonna have to save this clock spring, I guess. Because the clock spring wasn't the problem after all. Eh, what are you gonna do? So, rewatch this video if you want to do a clock spring job. Also, rewatch my other airbag module video if you really want to get that airbag light out. That's it, guys. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next project. Peace. Wow. There we go, guys. No check engine lights, no airbag warning lights, nothing. Just beautiful glowing gauges. What a pleasure it is driving around without that warning light on. Especially at night, no more red light glowing in my face. <laughs>